I'm Cadet Lee. And I'm Cadet Lamb. And we'll be showing you the four basic knots for the rope bridge. Which is the square knot, wireman's bowline, and the figure eight knot. In addition to that, we'll also be talking about the Swiss seat and the Australian seat and showing you tips and tricks about how to tie them faster and tighter. So the first knot we're going to be showing you today is the square knot. It's the basic knot and we're going to show you two ways to do it, the basic way and the faster way. Um, so the way you tie it is you bring your right side over the left side and carry it under and then you bring the, the left side that you just brought over over the right side and pull it through. So then once you're done, you'll end up with this. It looks kind of like an infinity and it should be able to go back and forth. So this is one of the basic knots you'll use on the Swiss seat. I'll also show you another way of doing it, which is uh, purely for the knot relay race. What you'll do is you get a loop on your left hand or right hand, and you'll get the other end on the other side. And what you'll do is you'll feed it through the pole, give it to your left hand so it can bring it around the loop, grab it again with your right hand, and pull it through. And what happens is you'll get the square knot here, just like that. Just make sure when you are doing this for the knot relay, that you are certain that you'll be able to do it because any penalties will be counted against us and this is a competition. So the second knot we're going to be showing you today is the bowline. I will be showing you the basic way and he will be showing you the faster way. So the first thing you start off doing is you make a little loop with the rope and then you bring the end of the rope through it and then around the back back through that hole and then you grab the end of the rope and the loop you just made a little tight. So this is used to clip onto your D-ring when you're crossing the rope bridge and uh, coming back. I'll be showing you the uh, faster way of doing that. Uh, when we do this, you can use this during the rope bridge and also in competitions. This is more stable than the square knot that I showed you before. What you're going to do is you're going to grab one end of the rope and the other end of the rope. You'll grab it, come down here like this, and go like that. If you look here, this, this part right here, that is the loop that Lamp made over there, and this is the rope going in. You'll grab this end of the rope and put it over, and now what you're doing is you're getting the rope that you put through the hoop, uh, the hoop going around the sump, coming back in the hole, and then pull through. Now, one thing you, I would like to show you is that when you're doing it, you can do it like that and you can do it other ways you want, but if you do it like this, uh, you have less areas of mistakes because you'll be able to get the loop, you'll be able to put it on top and then you'll be able to bring it back into your hand. And once you have it in your hand, you grab nothing else except for that loop and then your other side. That's the bowline. The third knot we'll be showing you today is the wireman's knot. This is required for the rope bridge. There's only really one way to do it, but you can tie it tighter or looser, and it needs to be tied uh, looser when you're doing the rope bridge to make it easier to clip. So you start off by having the rope anywhere on the rope. You wrap it around your hand three times. So you see there's three ropes here. You end up grabbing the middle one, bringing it to your wrist, and then you grab the new middle one to your fingertips, keeping that one there. And you grab this new middle one, bring it back to your wrist, then the next middle one, you just grab it and pull it straight up. So then it makes these two places to clip, and you can clip right here. So when you're doing the wireman's knot, um, some tips that I can give you guys for it is that when you are wrapping up in your hands, try to make it as loose as possible. So what happens is, is that when you're dragging the ropes all the way through, it'll make it a lot easier to drag it all through because if you were to make it as tight as possible on your hands, what would happen is you'd barely be able to get it through and then you won't be have, having that speed that you could if you were doing it loose. And one tip on how to know if the wireman is There'll be two sides to it and if you get the two sides here and this is where you clip the, the d-rings you clip one here you clip one on this side and this side 
and that's for easy. Easy way to pull it apart. And the reason we have that is because when we're on the rope bridge and we're all going on it and all the weight is pulling the rope tight, we'll have the two D rings so that we can just one, two, and pull so that we can have it untied and. So the fourth and final knot we'll be showing you today is the figure eight knot. This knot is not required for the rope bridge and you won't be tying it for the rope bridge. This is mainly used during knot tying competitions. And the way you do it is you get a loop here, you hold it up here, you grab it, uh, like behind it, bring your hand all the way around. So that's, that's just grabbing it, bringing it around this way and feeding it to your other hand. Just grab through, grab here and pull. So it, it makes kind of an eight. If you want a left hand perspective of doing it, you'll grab it with your right hand. The loop will be on the right side the so that uh, as the same hand as you're grabbing it, you'll grab it with your left hand, go around just like he said, come through, grab with your other hand, and pull. And that is the figure eight. Now we'll show you the uh, Swiss seat. The Swiss seat is a seat that you tie on your hip so that you can go across the rope bridge safely. You'll start off with having the rope and you'll get it to one side and you pull the other side across. Once it's on your waist, you should bring it up a little bit and pull the rope through once, twice. You'll tie that tight and then you'll bring it down through your legs, pick it back up. And then once you're here, you're just gonna pull the rope through your waist band and have it like that. That is very important when doing the Swiss seat. You want the rope to go through the rope, the, the Swiss seat just like that. I'll do it on the other side to make sure. I'll pull it through. And once you have the loops, you'll pull tight. Squat down while you're doing it so that you'll get it as tight as possible. And once you do that, you're gonna tie a square knot on the left side. Generally, you would like another person to come here and hold the, that part so you can tie the other side of it. Also, as tight as possible. Once you have that, you're gonna get one side of the rope. You're gonna go <laughs> under and out. Just like so. And what's that part called? This is the uh, secure, the secure knot that you have on this square knot. You'll, next one you'll go from above, down, and then out. Once you have those two knots, that's the Swiss seat. You'll have the uh, excess rope in your pocket because that will count as a penalty in some places. And then you'll get a D-ring and you'll clip it on right here. Now I'll show you some tips and tricks for the uh, Swiss seat to get it tighter and get it faster. Is when you're tying it, have it above your waist in the beginning. And when you're tying this knot right here in the beginning, you want to tie that tight. It doesn't seem like it, but if you tie this tight and you do everything else mediocrely, what will happen is that you'll get the Swiss seat to be a lot more tighter than you would if it was regularly tied, not as tight. So and when I'm doing this already, I can feel it in my waist. And you want the Swiss as tight as possible so that when you're crossing, you will be able to stay close to the rope, even if the rope is sagging, so that you'll be able to cross efficiently and faster. When you're tying the square knot, and you're doing the uh, secure knots, what you want to do is just make sure you go out. Some people don't do that, and what happens is, is that they either do a different pattern and lose what they're doing, or they'll be fumbling around with the rope and trying to figure out what they did wrong. Once you have the Swiss seat tied, make sure you put the excess rope in the pocket. Done. So we're going to show you how to tie the Australian seat. 
this is for people that tie and tear down near side and far side during the rollers. So you get it, you fold it in half to make sure it's equal, and then you bring it around your waist. Once you have it equally here, you're going to tie a square knot, which is right over left, and then left over right. After that, just like in the Swiss seat, you're going to tie your security knots, which is up, in, and out, down, in, and out. And some people have different ways of tying the security knots, but as long as they look the same, you'll be alright. And after that, you are going to throw it around to your back so you can clip your D-ring here. 